Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number 39. And in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a few other input elements that you can use uh, in the browser or in HTML. And um, yeah, to get started with this tutorial, I've gone ahead and cleared out all the other code that was in our form. So now we have just a form and an input element of type submit. So that's our input submit button. Uh, and if you look at that in the browser, so let's look at Firefox. Um, this is pretty much what it looks like. In fact, uh, of course, you guys will see it like this when it's zoomed out so that button's all small and stuff, but I'm just zooming in a little bit so that you guys can see very clearly what's going on here. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm also gonna be using Google Chrome because I just wanna show you guys um, where certain input elements might look a little bit different and also, um, uh, yeah, basically there's some input elements that we're gonna look at that uh, is supported by Chrome, but are not really supported by Firefox. And um, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the reason why I'm using two browsers in this video. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, start by looking at the input element of type submit or type file, sorry. So let's go, uh, let's type in input and I'm gonna give it a type of file and I'm gonna give it a name of file upload or something, right? So whatever you're expecting the user to upload with this uh, input element, you can go ahead and just put that as the name. And then uh, I wanna put in a double break tag uh, just to space everything out a little bit better. All right, so let's save, come back over to the browser and refresh. And now you can see in Firefox, we have our submit, or not our submit button, but our file upload button over here. Uh, and the great thing about this is you can then click on it um, and it's gonna open a little window where you can then select a file that you wanna upload to the server or to the website, hit open. Um, and yeah, the name is gonna appear there, uh, right? But this doesn't automatically upload a file to the server. When I click submit, you can see it goes through to uh, login.php, which is our action over here on the form, right? So uh, whatever action you put in there, that's where it's gonna take you. And hopefully this file, whatever this file is, has some smart PHP code that allows the user to upload and save the file. If not, uh, yeah then that data is kind of lost, right? Um, and yeah, we haven't learned about PHP just yet, so uh, we'll learn about that in future. Okay, anyway, so now we've taken a look at the file submit. There are a few other options that we can look at. And one of those input, one of the other types of inputs that we can take a look at is something called an email uh, input. And this is uh, new to HTML5. So some of the elements that I've, most of the elements that I've shown you um, have been around in HTML for a really long time, but some of the elements that I'm gonna be talking about now have only been around since HTML5, uh, so they're fairly new. And some browsers support them, other browsers don't support them. Uh, it just depends on what browser you're using. Most of the good browsers do, um, but uh, yeah, you'll see in certain cases well, why I have uh, Chrome open here as well. Right, so uh, let's go over to the input type of uh, the second input and change that to email. And then for the name, we can also just set that to email. Right, and if we save this and jump back over to the browser, uh, you can see what we have what looks like an empty text box. Uh, it's probably better if I place a placeholder in here just to make that um, tell us what we're uh, needing to put in there, right? And uh, now you'll see if I type in James, just a name, James, uh, or whatever you wanted to type in, uh, you'll see that when I click out of that uh, text box or that email box, uh, we now have a red line around the element. And if I hit submit, the browser won't let this form submit without a valid email address. So right now this is just a person's name. It's not an email address. The browser automatically knows that because of this type being set to email. Um, and so this is something that like, like I said, it's new to HTML5. It, uh, these elements were not around before, but um, basically it automatically validates an email. So you don't have to use PHP or JavaScript to do it uh, for yourself. 
although it's still recommended that you check on the server with PHP uh, if it is an actual valid email. But let's type in a valid email here. So james at email.com, right? Uh, now, if we uh, go out of this box, you can see that uh, we don't have an error and I can actually submit um, this form because this is a valid email address. The email address might not actually exist, but uh, we do have a name, we do have an at symbol, and we do have uh, a domain at something.com or at something.co.za or whatever it is. Uh, so the browser knows that this looks like an uh, like a valid email. So we'll go ahead and let the user submit the form. Right, uh, so now we've gone ahead and looked at email. Let's look at the next one I wanna show you guys, which is a telephone number. And so this is not going to look very different in the browser at all. Um, if we refresh, you can see that this just looks like a normal text box. Um, and even if we type letters in here, it lets us type the letters and it's not automatically validating anything. But the nice thing about this one is it will, uh, if you open it on your phone, give you a keyboard that has numbers only. So instead of popping up with the entire QWERTY keyboard, it just pops up with the numbers zero to nine and then the hash symbol and the star symbol or whatever. And uh, basically that the same keyboard that you have when you're phoning somebody is the same keyboard it gives you when you wanna fill in um, a telephone number. Uh, so basically users who are on their phone um, will find it a lot easier to place a telephone number in this input element because they can only select numbers, right? Um, so that is telephone. And by the way, I should have changed that uh, name to telephone. Uh, not that it matters now anyway, right? Uh, the next element I wanna show you guys is going to be uh, the month element. So let's go ahead and change the type here to month and the name to month and the placeholder to month. <laughs> right, so save that, come back over the browser, hit refresh. And in Firefox, this looks like a normal text box um, and the user's actually gonna have to type like January or whatever month uh, they wanna work with, right? Whereas if you look at it in Google Chrome, so let's come back here and refresh. Uh, all these other elements look pretty much the same, but you'll see that this month element looks very different to the way it looked in Firefox. And if you click on this, you can actually use these little arrows to select a month and it'll only give you the option of January through to December. Um, and the nice thing about this one as well is if you look at it on your phone, it'll also give you just a little drop down list so you can pick a month um, easier on your phone rather than having to type out the entire month name, you can just select it in a drop down list. And uh, you'll see it also gives us another second option here which uh, allows us to select the year, right? Um, and so that's the difference between Firefox and Chrome is that uh, Chrome actually supports this date element or this date uh, uh, input type, whereas uh, Firefox doesn't actually support that uh, month input type and therefore um, it just shows as a normal text box, right? Um, then there are a few others that we can work with. So. Uh, let's take a look at what time does. So let's go time, 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 time. I don't think I've even actually used time ever, but again, in Firefox, it just looks like a normal text box, but in Google Chrome, and also if you look at this on your phone, it'll give you a little bit of a better element to work with. So now you can actually pick uh, a time down to the hours, minutes, and I think this will be AM and PM, yeah. Okay, so uh, there we go. Uh, these are some of the input elements. I'm not gonna run through all of them, but if you go over to uh, W3Schools, I'll leave this link in the video description. You can go ahead and check out um, some of these elements. In fact, uh, you will have to scroll down the page somewhat, but uh, uh, all of these uh, types are listed down here. One of the ones that might be worth looking at is uh, range because this one works in Firefox and Chrome. So 
Um, let's just take a look at range as well. Let's go down here. Um, range, range, and range. Um, so save this, jump back over to Chrome. Let's take a look. And you can see that you can now select a range of uh, um, basically a number, but we don't actually have a number count over here. So there's still some missing kind of info that we definitely need a place in this element. Um, and you might want to just read about that somewhere. Uh, and then the same thing in uh, Firefox, you've got this little range selector, but again, you don't know actually how much you're selecting. So uh, yeah, you definitely want to use JavaScript or something to, to put a little number next to here so you can see, okay, that's a hundred and this is zero, right? Um, and uh, yeah, now that we've taken a look at the different types of inputs um, and you guys know what they look like in different browsers and you know that it also works differently on a phone, uh, you can go ahead and play around with those. I just want to send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development. And they'll teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field, and they'll do it within 12 weeks. So check out their website. The link is in the description below. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Special thanks to the guys whose names are on screen now. These guys contribute $5 or more on Patreon, and I really appreciate that. Uh, while you're still here, there are a few other things that you can do to help out. So follow me on social media and check out some more of my content and I'll see you guys next time.